We're so happy to have you back with us for the wonder of Christmas. This week we're talking about the wonder of a manger. If you had the opportunity to listen to the story, you'll know that the manger is actually a feeding trough uh, for animals in a stable. So since there was no room for Mary and Joseph in the inn, they had to sleep in the stable for the night. So when Jesus was born, uh, Joseph put straw hay into the manger to make a, a nice soft bed for Jesus and they laid him in the manger um, as a bed. So in honor of Jesus' birth, today we are going to make edible mangers. This is made out of chow mein noodles, butterscotch chips, and some pretzels. So in your kit, you're going to find a baggie of chow mein noodles that has a couple pretzels in it, and then a baggie of butterscotch chips. So find those, and in addition to that, you're going to need a microwave-safe bowl, a spoon, and a microwave. That's why we're in my kitchen today. But before we get started, make sure you go wash your hands. Um, always want to wash your hands before we work with food. And um, once you've washed your hands, you're going to pour your butterscotch chips into your microwave safe bowl, which I've already done. And then you're going to put it in the microwave for 15 seconds and give it a stir. Now, I've already done that too. You can see my um, chips have not really started to melt yet, but I've already put them in for their first 15 seconds. Um, it's going to probably take at least 30, if not 45 seconds um, to melt them. But you want to check it every 15 seconds because you don't want to overdo them or they'll actually get all um, gross. So you don't want to overcook them. So I'm going to put them in for another 15 seconds. Let's see. Okay, there we go. And then we'll see when they're starting to melt. Um, yeah, if you overcook them, then they just get crumbly and they don't taste very good. So just 15 seconds at a time. You'll probably end up doing it um, for 45 seconds. But everybody's microwave's different, so that's why I want to make sure. Now you can see that it still looks like they haven't melted. But if I start to stir, they actually hold their shape until you stir them. And now you can see that they are somewhat melted, but not completely. So I'm going to do it for one more 15 seconds. And as I was saying, everybody's microwave's different, so your microwave might actually cook it up in a, or melt it in a good 30 seconds. Um, or it's possible that you may need a whole minute, but just keep checking on it. Keep stirring. Okay, I think this will actually be... Good enough. I'm gonna. Yes. That is nice and melty, so I'm good to go. I'm gonna stir it up and make sure I got all the clumps out. If there's one or two clumps in it, it's actually okay. And then I'm gonna take my chow mein noodles, and you have about half a cup. I'm gonna pour them in there. And then we're gonna stir those until they are all coated with. Scotch. Okay, there we go. And then once we get it all coated, you're going to take your piece of wax paper that was also in your kit, and I have mine on a plate. I'm going to dump this out of my bowl onto my wax paper. And that actually came on my wax paper kind of pretty much in a mound which is what we want. We want it in a nice mound, but you can use your spoon to kind of shape it a little more, but I really don't need to. You might still have some butterscotch in the bottom of your bowl. If you do, you can actually use that as a little bit of glue um, to uh, get your pretzels to stick, because they're going to go on either side. So take your pretzels and put them on either side of your butterscotch, or your butterscotch noodles now. And if you need to, you can just rub a little bit of melted butterscotch on the ends of the pretzels, and that will help glue them together. 
But another way to get them to stick is just, oh, see my hand and not, I'm gonna take this and just kind of smush them all together. That also is a good way to get them to um, all stick together. And then once you've done that, you have your edible manger. Um, then put that off to the side and let it dry. And once it's dry, or, or hardened I should say, then it's all good to eat. Uh, actually it's good to eat when it's still all melted so ask mom and dad when is the best time to, to eat the snack. It's going to be a little messier if you do it when it's still melted but either way it is delicious. So I hope you enjoy your edible mangers and when you are um, able to sit down and have your snack just um, remember the gift that God gave us um, when he brought the baby Jesus into the world in such a surprising and unexpected way. One would think the, the Son of God would come in a glorious, um, big, loud, exciting way like a, a, a king, an emperor, but no. Instead, Jesus came in a stable, um, and the first people to come see him were the shepherds. Who Shepherds are poor people who don't get the opportunity to go visit kings very often, if ever. So um, when he came to show us God's love and teach us how we can show others how much God loves us um, and to then show God's love into the world. So just keep that in mind when you think of the, the manger and Jesus being born in such a humble and surprising way. And then also when you're having your snack and maybe sharing it with your family, you could take a look at the lesson and the uh, reflections on the manger questions. Um, these are questions that you can sit down and think about and discuss as a family. Um, and you don't have to answer them all, but certainly go through them and, and at least discuss a little bit about Jesus and what it means for Jesus to be um, born in a manger in, in this uh, surprising way. And the questions are, Jesus is a king, but he came to the world in a humble, unexpected way. What might you expect the birth of a king to be like? How might a king's birth be announced? How is Jesus a different king, kind of king? As a follower of Jesus, who teaches us a way of peace and love? How is your life different than if you did not follow Jesus? What do you think the world would be like if everyone treated each other with love and lived together peaceably? What are some ways you can work for peace in God's world? These are excellent questions. I hope you have a good time um, discussing your answers with your family. And uh, feel free to reach out to me and share any answers that you guys have and any ideas you have about certainly how we all can share God's peace in this world. So have an absolutely wonderful week and can't wait to um, get together next week to talk about the symbols of Christmas and the Christmas tree. Until then, see you. Bye.